Hey guys, here we are again. This is a 2021 Rocky Mountain Instinct C70 that we get to take a close look at, talk about some of the specifications, the details, who this might work for, and uh, we're just excited to be looking at a new bike because as you can see, this room that usually houses a couple hundred bikes has eight. Um, so, 2021 Rocky Mountain Instinct C70. So in the Instinct lineup, we now have 27.5 and 29er versions, depending on size in some cases, and there are alloy and carbon versions. So the C70, the C is for carbon, this is a 29er, and this is a medium that we're looking at. This bike in extra small, small, and medium is available in 27.5, and then in small up to extra large is available in 29. So if you're in a small or a medium, you get the option of which size to go with, and then outside of that, you're either going 29 on the bigger ones or 27.5 on the extra small. So the general stuff on this bike is it is 140 millimeter rear travel and 150 millimeter travel fork. This bike is designed to be a true trail bike and our definition and most people's definition of a trail bike is a bike that is trying to be as lively and sprightly on climbing stuff as it is confidence inspiring and smile inducing on the descents. So everything on this guy from the amount of travel to the weight to the geometry all uh, sort of adds up to delivering on that that same story that this is a bike about going for a long ride that's going to have ups and downs you'll have as good a chance of beating your buddies to the top of the climb as you will beating them back down the other side and if they're on an older bike of any sort you probably have a much better chance of beating them up uh, and beating them down because these new modern trail bikes with the modern geometries really have improved their overall climbing and descending abilities. So I will go over the specifications on this Instinct C70 and we will show you some details, some close-ups, talk about geometry and what kind of size might work for you. Let's get into that. So we'll just start with some general information about the Instinct. This particular one we're looking at is the Instinct C70. That's sort of the middle of the road for this bike here. There are two different alloy versions and then six dis different carbon versions. And this is sort of the middle of the carbon versions. This particular bike is $8,369 in Canada or $68.99 in the States. Um, and this one weighs out, this medium with uh, 29 inch wheels is 31.1 pounds, which these days is actually a pretty respectable weight for these guys. Um, in those different models, you basically have two different alloy models. The alloy ones start at 31.29 US dollars or 38.59 Canadian. And then in the carbon models, they go from $44.99 USD for a carbon 30 um, up to $10,449 for the carbon 99. Those prices are $59.49 Canadian for a carbon 30 up to $14,099 for the C99 in Canada. So as you can tell by price, these guys aren't going after the bottom priced bike in a category, but we're going to look at some details which point out why I think they're very much worth paying a bit of a premium for. Uh, both fit and finish and some of the adjustability on this bike really do make it a really rad consideration for a hardcore rider who can feel that difference in geometry or in the way their suspension performs. And this is a bike that's trying to give you the adjustment that with your one bike, you're going to be able to maybe play with how it handles for different terrain or to suit different moods. Um, so we're going to talk about all that sort of stuff. But that's the basics. It's a 31.1 pound medium 29er, this Carbon 70. And this particular one is $8,369 in Canada. 
And I should probably point out that this is filmed March of 2021, because as we're seeing with a lot of bikes, uh, prices are changing um, as the bike shortage and parts shortage is playing out in rising prices and all sorts of other stuff, um, as well as shipping affecting prices. So now we can get into looking at some of the specifics. So the Rocky Mountain Instinct Carbon 70 is a pretty true Shimano XT build. So that comes down to XT cassette, uh, 12 speed XT derailleur, actual XT cranks, which is becoming a rare thing on an XT build these days. You're often seeing off-brand cranks. So nice to see those XT cranks. They're super nice quality stuff. Uh, and then it's got the XT four piston brakes on here, as well as having obviously the XT levers and shifter itself is XT. So there is absolutely nothing left to quibble about as far as drivetrain and braking components on this bike. Um, all top notch stuff. I would say maybe with the only exception being that they chose to go with not the fanciest rotors, but that is quite a common option. So full XT, super easy to fall in love with that. Um, rims on this are a race face AR30, so that's a 30 millimeter internal uh, alloy rim on there. The hub on this guy is a DT Swiss 370 uh, boost hub, which um, if you know the DT Swiss stuff, that means that it's kind of the cheaper spec version of that hub, but they can be upgraded to putting the star ratchet system inside to turn them into the equivalent of a, a 350 hub. Um, the general design on Rocky Mountain full suspensions is that they're roughly using a horse link, although they might still be using um, the smooth link name, but it is basically a horse link. We've got a chainstay uh, mounted pivot that's ahead and below the rear axle and then your main pivot is just hidden in there. We do have a one up top chain guide there. This is where we're going to start getting into some of the details. Um, this is a full carbon bike. Um, all of the instincts and the altitudes, this bike does share its frame basically with the altitude with some different linkage and shock in there. But both models will have this uh, rear axle that has basically a flip chip that gives you 10 millimeters of fore aft adjustment. So if you're kind of from the specialized enduro camp of loving a really long rear end to make your bike super stable at high speeds, you can run that in the long setup. If you're looking for your bike to be a little bit funner, a little bit uh, easier to maneuver in some tight stuff, then you keep it in the short setting. Um, even in the short setting, this isn't very short, um, but this does fit really nicely um, against some of the other bikes that are doing size specific chain stays, which is personally something that I hate because um, I'm a tall guy and I look at some of the bikes that have size specific chain stays and the biggest turnoff for me is being stuck with some barge length rear end on a bike when I really, really prefer short rear ends because I am mostly out to have fun getting the last kilometer an hour through a rock garden is less important than having a maneuverable bike that uh, I really want to ride. So one level of where that extra money that you spend on a Rocky Mountain, adjustable chain stays. We also have a very, very nicely done chain stay protector here. Um, there's even some rubber that's wrapping around the underside of the seat stay there. And we have the cleanest cable routing of anything I know. These are sleeved internal cable routings on these bike. Um, and then they're coming out hidden behind this port that you can, uh, that's just a cover there, but very, very sleek. And uh, I would say category leading at this point. We have some really, really nice and complete rubber 
down tube protection on here. So if you're doing some shuttling, you've got protection up there. If you're spitting up rocks, you've got protection down there. So very nice to see. We also have a room for a water bottle on here. And once again, showing their attention to detail on this bike, just a little bit of sculpting to the carbon down below the water bottle mounts. That's gonna let you actually run your water bottle um, using those uh, mounts further down, um, where a lot of companies, they don't put the thought into it and you're sort of hunting around for a bottle cage that maybe um, doesn't interfere with where that curve would be. So a really nice bit of detail. We next get into the Ride 9 system. So this Ride 9 system, basically the 9 part of that name means you do end up with 9 different positions that uh, basically give you adjustment over the bike's geometry and over how the suspension is going to behave, its progressivity. Um, in general, the adjustments that move in line with the shock are uh, basically just adjusting your geometry. When you're adjusting perpendicular, you're adjusting the progressivity of uh, the shock. So that would mean if you had your mount in the kind of upper corner, um, it's gonna be a little bit more poppy and progressive down low and you're gonna get a bike that uh, is gonna have probably even better traction. So you sort of have a way of playing around with those things. Right now we are in what they would call the slack position on that. This is a float DPX2 uh, performance uh, rear shock on here. So we've got the piggyback, we've got our three positions of firmness on there, um, and we've got a red button hidden on the other side there. There's your rebound adjustment. So a really nice shock, and this is pretty much to be expected on uh, bikes in this price range in this amount of travel. We have a race face post made by uh, Fox in this case, of course, internally rooted. I'll just show you how we go from that glass, glossy purple up to this kind of matte sandy color on this guy. This is one of two colors offered in the Instincts. The other one I can quickly run over. This is their Ice Ice Baby gloss against the sort of matte black. That's the second color that is a size small in the C50 that we're just finishing up for a customer. But you do have two different options there. Another nice detail, we're looking at some ergon grips, race face, turbine, handlebars, a Rocky Mountain stem on here, a Fox Float Performance Elite Fork, and this is a Performance Elite Fork that is using the Fit 4 as opposed to the Grip 2 damper. So in that float, you're able to get two different dampers. I believe they have chosen to go with the Fit 4, thinking about people maybe using this as a bit of a marathon bike or a long miles bike, and wanting to get quick access to this uh, basically three position compression adjustment that is available on the Fit 4 version. Uh, tires, we have Minion DHF, um, 29 by 2.5 wide trail on the front and that's with an EXO plus casing and then on the back we have the DHR2 and a 29 by 2.4 and that is also EXO plus casing so that is a casing that's going to give you reasonable puncture protection um, while still trying to keep the tire reasonably light though these aren't the lightest of the uh, options. In those details I talked about, they're fully sheathed um, cables going inside the frame. They have a really, really nice port system here. So on either side of the frame, you've got that nice port. These are not going to rattle. You don't have to stuff foam inside your forks or anything. Um, really, really nice detail. Next, we will talk a little bit about geometry and sizing on this guy. So for geometry and sizing suggestions on these guys, these are a totally modernized fit compared to the last version of the Instinct. 
Uh, and by modern, I mean that it's actually got a pretty good um, reach and angles on this for a given size. So I would still say extra small, you're probably talking somebody under five foot three, five foot four. Small is gonna be five four to five seven. Medium, five seven to five ten. Large, five ten to six one, six two. And then XL, uh, six one to six four, six five, something like that. I usually judge my bikes based on a large because that's what I am and I'm self-centered. Um, it also just makes it easy to always look at the same size bikes to compare. Um, so because we have so many adjustments with that Ride 9 on here, um, I just pull the neutral adjustment um, sort of angles. Um, we're looking at a 65.7 degree head tube angle, a 76.7 .7 seat tube angle, and reach numbers of 487 millimeters, which is a really respectable and like right in my sweet spot for a size large. So that's where I'm very excited about this as a fit. I'm six foot one and I have a large in this on order for myself. That rear center length, because we have the 10 millimeters of adjustment with that flip chip there, basically ranges from 437 to 447 millimeters. So that is, if you're down in a, a smaller size bike, that's still a relatively long chainstay length. So this bike is going to be um, a fairly stable bike, no matter which position. And then you have the option of going more stable and then vice versa. If you're on the extra large side of things, um, having that flipped in the long position is going to keep things well balanced for you if that's what you're after. Uh, like I said, I've got a large on order and I will have that in the short position and pretty sure I won't be tempted to flip it because I personally love a short rear end on a bike, as I've mentioned. So 487 millimeters reach and a good steep seat tube. That seat tube is going to help this thing to climb like crazy. From the initial reviews I've seen on this online, and even from the way that we were uh, sort of sold this bike from Rocky, they were looking to keep the anti-squat um, from, basically they wanted to keep it lively on climbs, which can mean if you're a little bit of a square peddler, um, you're gonna feel a little bit of bob, but the exchange is by keeping it more lively is you're keeping your suspension active. And when you come to some loose, um, gross stuff on a climb, that's really gonna give you amazing traction. So those bikes that feel incredibly efficient because they basically um, lock themselves out almost during climbs, those bikes tend to not uh, get the same benefits as far as traction goes um, when you're climbing. The exchange is also then that lively bike on the up will remain a little bit more uh, plush and active, um, so they say on the downs. So this is the 2021 Instinct Carbon 29 C70. There's a Canadian leaf. That's a Canadian brand, proudly. Um, hopefully this is useful information for you and showing you some details that maybe you're not seeing elsewhere. If you like this sort of stuff and want to see it for lots of bikes, give us a like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thank you.